Today on Internet Marketing Pro, we have John Lee Dumas from the wildly successful podcast show, Entrepreneur on Fire. Are you legally minimizing your future tax burden and staying compliant in today's complex tax code? If not, our podcast show sponsor and personal accountant and friend, Michelou Consulting, has over 30 years' experience in providing top quality professional services in accounting and tax preparation for a wide variety of clients like you. Whether you need tax return filing, planning, bookkeeping, financial statements, full service payroll, or a corporate or individual tax return filing, I personally endorse you to contact Jeffrey Ressler, CPA, at 561 237 5264. That number again is 561 237 5264. And you can visit their website at jrcpa.net. That's jrcpa.net. Tell Jeff that Chad Deckard sent you from this podcast show and receive his special rate for listening to the show. Thank you very much for listening. Now, let's get on with the show. Broadcasting from the city of sun and rain off the Atlantic Ocean in Boca Raton, Florida. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. I'm your host, Chad Deckard, and welcome to my Internet Marketing Pro podcast show. My shows will cover how to grow your business as well as topics on tips, tricks, and techniques, digital lifestyles, the future of finance, entrepreneurism, so, thank you for tuning into my show as we begin this adventure together exploring many great things to come. Now, let's cover a few quick announcements before we get started. I really appreciate all the feedback that I've been getting and what a difference it makes in motivating me to put these shows out and continually think about the next subject matter that I'd like to explore with you all. I am also very ex excited about all of you helping me get more subscribers by sharing my content with your social network. My weekly listener base is growing a great deal week after week and that's the greatest payoff my listeners can do for me in giving back for my time and efforts in putting this show together. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to my show. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support. And particularly this week, I'm on a drive based on this following show that's coming up by what uh, John tells me in some of the tips that you need in order to be a successful podcast show online. I am asking you now that by the end of this show, because it's such an awesome show. Would you be so kind to look in the description of where you're listening to the show or go to chaddecker.com or cdecker.com. That is C-D-E-C-K-A-R-D.com and look for the link that will take you to iTunes. And please do me the favor and give me a rating and a review on iTunes. My goal is to get 200 of these uh, over the next month so that maybe I can get up there with John and be ranked as some of the top highlighted iTunes podcast shows out there. So that's kind of my goal, and I'd really love to be able to do that because that's particularly how John has been able to get over 10,000 downloads on his show daily uh, just more recently, and he just launched his show uh, less than six months ago. So let's move on with the show. Today, I have uh, John Lee Dumas here. He's the founder and host of a top-ranked business podcast called Entrepreneur on Fire. Entrepreneur on Fire generates over 150,000 unique downloads every single month in over 140 countries. He has a lineup uh, consisting of Seth Godin, Tim Ferriss, Barbara Cochran, Gary Vanderchuk, and Chris Brogan, and over 170 others. And that is why we are going to have this conversation here today with John Lee Dumas. Welcome to the show, John. Chad, I am ready to rock the mic. Let's do this. Well, I really appreciate you uh, taking the time out of your busy schedule with all these interviews that you uh, <laughs> are doing. It's amazing how many you've done in, sh in a short amount of time, and not only just interviews. These are like really big time, like well known icons. I mean, Seth Gowden, Tim Ferriss, Barbara Cochran. I mean, Chris Brogan. I mean, I hear these names every day in the media all the time. How about if you tell us about the story of your, you know, evolution of. Uh, you know, where you came from and how you got to where you are right now here today. Well, everybody has a journey, Chad. And my journey starts way back in the country of Maine. I was born and raised in southern Maine. 
actually was here for the first 18 years of my life and then went to college on an ROTC scholarship. So I was a cadet for those four years. Then I was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the U.S. Army back in 2002 at the age of 22. Spent the next four years as an active duty officer serving our country. Spent 13 months in Iraq. And then at 26, I was done with my active duty requirement. So I entered the quote unquote civilian world and tried my hand at a bunch of different things. I tried commercial real estate, residential real estate, corporate finance, tech startups. I just was really trying to get into the mix and find my real passion, find what I was really into, but nothing was really clicking with me. So lo and behold, one day I was just listening to a podcast, a lightning bolt hit me and I said, wow, there is definitely a niche that just needs to be filled out there because there are people like myself that are driving to work every single day, that are hitting the gym every single day, that are looking to consume valuable content during these periods of their life when they're otherwise stuck, like in a car, in traffic, or on a treadmill, what have you. And there were some great podcasts out there, Chad, but none of them were producing a ton of content. It was once a week or once every two weeks. And I was going through so many years of their podcasts, of their content, in just a few weeks or even just a couple months. And I was, I knew that there were other people out there like myself who were driving to work every single day, who were taking their dog for a walk, who were running along the beach, consuming podcasts because they loved the inspiration and the motivation. And I knew that there was definitely this niche that needed to be filled. So that was my light bulb moment. That's when I said, you know what? Entrepreneur on fire needs to be born. I need to bring this to the public, to people who want a daily podcast. So when they wake up in the morning, there's that fresh podcast waiting for them to download, to consume, and they know it's going to be there for them every single day. So back in June of 2012, I laid it all on the table. I quit my job. I launched into Entrepreneur on Fire full time. And since then, it's just really been an inspiring journey for me, interviewing incredible entrepreneurs, over 200 now, uh, highlighted by many of those that you've already named. And those number that those number that you said are very exciting. It's over 150,000 unique downloads every single month in over 140 countries. And to me, that's just crazy, the amount of people that we're reaching with these amazing stories, with these amazing journeys of these inspiring entrepreneurs. Yeah, you know, and, and that's what... Uh, kind of uh, intrigued me about you in my exploration online and surfing and running into several places that kind of, it's kind of like the stars align. It's really odd because your timing is the same timing that I've taken. I launched my podcast like maybe a week before you. I took a little bit different approach and an idea of kind of like, let's do this as an explored, an exploration project. Because I knew and thinking about it, um, because I was on the front end of the trend of the beginning of the internet, knowing that email marketing was a big deal. But now that, you know, we have mobile devices and they're becoming more popular and more powerful than ever, I thought, what better time than now to be broadcasting and as a marketer looking for the lowest cost of marketing and getting a message out to a massive audience, what better way to do it than podcasting? You know, and, and not only that, just like you, it's like the cup of Joe. I used to drive from Fort Lauderdale to um, West Palm Beach and back every day. And in the morning and the afternoon, I couldn't wait to actually do exactly why you do your podcast was to listen to people that I could learn from and get inspired from. And then it made me think, you know, when I was doing that, why can't I do that? Why can't I share? Why can't I have my own platform and do it my way? And have other people involved, and that's why we are here today. So this is a really cool and exciting interview, but I totally relate with you, John. So tell me, John, you have this book that you um, you wrote. It's on Amazon right now. Tell us a little bit about uh, this book, because in this book, you know, you had this journey to begin the show, and but you get into some very specific details in the book about podcasting. Would you mind sharing some of those uh, ideas with the audience? I'd love to, Chad. I mean, I am 100% a believer in full transparency. And just to kind of jump on the back about what you were saying with podcasting and why it's just on this brink of an explosion is because you're right. It's just this incredible, intimate way to connect with people on a completely different level. I mean, you're literally inside their heads. They're They have their head buds on, you're inside, you're talking to them, you're coming through the car speakers, they're hearing your voice, 
they're becoming to know, like, and trust you because of that. You're becoming an authority figure in your niche. So podcasting has just really proven to become a great way to grow a very loyal audience quickly. And that was what I was able to do at Entrepreneur on Fire. And so I was getting these emails all the time saying, John, I love your podcast. I love what you're doing. I'm looking to start a podcast in my own niche, in my own industry. What do I do? And, you know, of course, I can't answer every email personalized because that would just take up every single second of my day. So I said, you know what? There's a book that needs to be written out there. I went on Amazon. I looked. The most recent book was written back in 2011 or 2010. It was crap anyways. And I was like, I can't <laughs> believe that nobody's recently come out with a book about how to podcast, especially in this year of 2013 when so many changes have been made in the last year, let alone the last three years, which is when the last book has been published. So I set out on my journey to create podcast launch, a step-by-step -step guide to launch your podcast. And it was a very interesting and exciting journey. I learned a lot about writing a book. I learned a lot about the publishing process on the Amazon platform. And I'm very proud to say that I launched February 13th, and it's currently the number one ranked business book on, on Amazon in the podcasting category. So I've definitely hit that goal that I set out to do. And the thing that I'm also most proud of are the 55 five-star ratings that come with it due to the fact that I included 15 video tutorials that take you step-by-step -step on a visual guide through the podcasting process from step A to step Z. So the book was a journey in, in and of itself to write. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from it, and I really poured my heart and my soul into it and talked about all the mistakes and all the failures that I made while I started my podcasting journey. And I'd be happy to talk about any of those, Chad, that you'd like to. You know, and, and, and when you gave me the book and we had that conversation the first time, I read your book right away. You know, I ate it alive. You know, I pretty much <laughs> read it all in one sitting. And it just kind of resonated totally with me and kind of my own journey. And some of the things were some of the same uh, challenges that I had. But I like kind of, I'll be, I'll admit it. I think that I am really amazed with the amount of unique downloads that you were able to get. I didn't know some of the secrets that you told me. And um, I'm really interested to speak more about that later at a different time with you. But uh, you definitely had some good, you made me think about it and about being a social marketer and what I talk about on a lot of my other previous shows. And I'm thinking like, this guy really does know how to launch a product or a service. And you know, just seeing your numbers, and it's funny when I watch some of your videos, I saw because I use, you know, Libsyn as my hosting, and I saw your, your stats, and I was like, wow, he really isn't joking. I can, I totally understand the analytics. I don't know if anybody would totally recognize that in small print, but I saw it, and I could just peek out the numbers. I was like, wow, that's impressive. And to think that, like, you did that again with your book here more recently, getting 55 reviews. It's only just a few weeks. And, and when you launched before, I think you got, I think I counted some like 200 like reviews you had in the first two weeks. And, you know, you, part of your business model is to help other people launch their products and services. I have to say that I'm really impressed with the numbers that you get. And, you know, I know Josh Brogan gave you a, a referral or a quote that highly recommended your show and its platform to get the message out to like-minded people. So, you know, tell us a little bit about some of the things that you do that help um, people that get involved with your show. Tell us about your services, things like that. Well, thank you for that lead in chat. I mean, there's definitely a great thing about really being in control of a large audience, so to speak. And that's with Entrepreneur on Fire and with the idea of podcasting in general and the idea of just providing good content. You are just going to continue to grow a listener base, an audience base that becomes, that really starts to know, like, and trust what you're providing and they just want to learn and hear more. And I'm always looking to provide as much value for free as possible. And so again, listening to your audience, when they reach out to you and they send you emails and they say, John, I'm having this problem. John, I'm having this issue. One thing I kept getting over and over again was, John, I love your podcast. I've always wanted to start my own podcast. It's been something I've had you know, out on my to-do list now for two years, but I'm a small business owner. I'm a busy entrepreneur. I don't have the time 
to learn all the skills that it takes to you know, record your audio, format that MP3, upload the artwork, um, upload it to a media host, get all the SEO squared away, submit it to iTunes, BlackBerry, Stitcher Radio, get that RSS feed, and then really start promoting it afterwards. They go, I don't have any idea how to do any of those things. I don't have the time to learn. I just want my voice out there because I have a valuable message to say, and I want to reach the demographic that podcasts can reach, which is just incredible. And so that really spurred me on to create podplatform.com, and that's just podplatform.com, where it just is an extremely simple service where anybody can just record their audio, which is as easy as pushing a red button on your computer, saying what you have to say, sending my team at Entrepreneur on Fire the MP3. We do the rest. We take that MP3, we format it, we upload it to our own media host, we add <clears throat> Excuse me. We add all the artwork, the title, the show notes, everything to it. Submit it to all the major directories. We send an actual direct download URL link. It's called, so you can put it on your website, on your blog, or you can send it to people individually. And it's all done on 100% bandwidth. So we created this service in response to these problems and issues that people were having. And that's just something great for your listeners to take forward with. Is you know you always want to be reaching out and engaging with your target market because they'll tell you what they need and then you just need to answer that need with products and services that solve that pain point. When it comes down to submitting a podcast, you know, you let's talk a little bit about syndication because, you know, syndication is probably the greatest amount of leverage you really have in doing podcasting because, you know, you can still put it up online like anything and it doesn't, no one really knows where it's, it's at unless you kind of, have a big microphone and can like spit it out loud and get it into a lot of places. So <laughs> tell us a little bit about, you know, more about syndication and maybe your some strategies or, you know, what your experience is or where, where the best places are to get it. Well, just like for any author, Amazon is the big elephant in the room. iTunes is the big elephant in the room for podcasters and they have made an amazing marketplace that people all around the world can go to and search for the type of content that they want to. So iTunes has just created this atmosphere of thousands and tens of thousands and hundreds and millions of people going to their store, looking for music, looking for videos, looking for podcasts, what have you, and they're searching out specific content and people know that that is the place to go. So when you create a podcast and you submit it to the iTunes store and it gets accepted, you are then in a situation, and I talk about this in, a, in the book, and this is very valuable information for anybody that's about to launch a podcast to make sure you launch it the correct way. When you first get accepted into the iTunes store and your RSS feed, your syndication feed, is accepted to that store, you are, you are thrown into what's called the new and noteworthy podcast section. And that is by far the best real estate in the podcasting universe. If you go to the iTunes store and click that podcasting tab, you, it's gonna take you to the podcast store home and those first two rows on that store home are all new and noteworthy. And what new and noteworthy means is that your podcast had to have been submitted less than eight weeks ago. You have a mere 56 days to be a new and noteworthy podcast in iTunes and again, it's the best advertising space in the podcasting universe. So I just stress the importance to anybody who's launching a podcast to take full advantage of this opportunity. And how do you take advantage of this? Well, when you launch a podcast, you launch it right. You don't just kind of do a, a test one, launch it, don't tell anybody about it, and then come back in four or five weeks and see how it's done because you've just wasted half of your ability to have this new and noteworthy exposure. Instead, and I outlined this again in podcast launch, you should be launching with a minimum of three podcasts. You get three podcasts out there and you treat it like a launch. You tell family, friends, any subscribers you have, any social media followers, fans that you have, you are telling them about this podcast and asking them to go subscribe download, rate, and review this podcast. Because when you do that, 
you start climbing in the rankings of the iTunes new and noteworthy. So when I launched Entrepreneur on Fire, I launched with three podcasts. I went out to everybody I knew and I asked them to download, subscribe, rate and review all three podcasts. And then I kept following that up with another podcast every single day because I was on a daily schedule. If you're on a weekly schedule, you would follow it up every single week. But it's simply a thing of mathematics. In Again, if you launch one podcast and 100 people download it, that's 100 downloads. And iTunes is going to look at that and say, oh, okay, he has 100 downloads. If you have three, people not only are going to download all three, but they're going to subscribe because there's actually something to subscribe to. So then your download numbers go up to 300. Your subscriber numbers go up because people are going to actually subscribe because there's something to subscribe to. There's more than one. There's three podcasts there. And they're more likely to rate and review because they see it's a podcast of substance. So when you're nailing those four major categories, you're going to start to show up at the top of the iTunes new and noteworthy store in whatever category you've chosen. And then all of a sudden, this organic traffic is going to start to come your way because people that have never heard about you, that have never heard about your podcast, but were looking for a podcast of whatever you're offering are going to be browsing the iTunes store. The first thing they're going to see is a new and noteworthy list, and they're going to browse through there first, and if they see what they like, they're going to check you out. And for Entrepreneur on Fire, specific numbers-wise, I was getting 40, 80, 30, 75 downloads per day for the first number of days, and then I hit the iTunes new and noteworthy section, and my numbers shot up into the thousands, and they have literally haven't turned back since because of that snowball effect. My big numbers started even pushing me further up in the rankings, and the higher up in the rankings that I went, the more or organic downloads I was getting. And Chad, just last week, my first day ever, I had over 10,000 downloads in one day. That's really sweet. That's awesome. For a person who's a longtime marketer like myself, uh, pretty much my entire life since I was 18 years old, I was publishing my own newspaper. I get excited with those kinds of numbers. I don't think anybody would. I mean, that is just crazy when you think about it. It's like, if you're going to do it, do it right. And you found that the secret form formula. And, you know, I was even in iTunes the other day, kind of remembering this story when you told me before, and I was trying to analyze it a little bit closer uh, in researching, you know, this conversation we're having here today. And I was really amazed that I'm sitting there going, I didn't even know about that. I didn't think about it, but I'm like, does that mean I have to start over again? I mean, that's <laughs> okay because I actually do have a new website where I'm going to tie, you know, this show with a new website and so different things around this new type of show I'm going to do moving forward. And, um, I'm really excited about it. So I'll get my chance to do it again. And, and I'm going to try to do it the way that you, uh, you stated there. And that's you should do it again, Chad. You, you absolutely have a second chance. You should relaunch now the right way. Well, you know, I should because, you know, I have, a, I've been in the business for such a long time. I've done, you know, all the trade shows many times a year for 15 years now. And, you know, my mailing list is between 12 and 16,000 professionals wow. and anything to do with internet marketing, you know, top CEOs to, you know, every small, like, you know, maybe, you know, people that are successful working at home. Cause you know, I do a lot of people that are just really successful at computers and they work at home and can make a great living. You know, like I'm actually one of those people that's been doing it most of my life and, and, and I like living the dream, but, you know, it's not easy, but it takes a lot of time of always constantly learning how to do things better. And that's why I like stories like yours is the fact that you found a way to do it much better and much easier. But you just got to make sure that you line everything up right and push forward. And, um, you know, you could do it, you know, and you're, you're a perfect example. And you know what? And you still to this day are on that highlighted board so it's almost kind of like i think of it like when you're playing like the old video games and they had the, the top 10 high scores as long as you remain there and had so many votes in the first two weeks i wonder you'll remain in that that up there in that listing i wonder no it's so true in a lot of ways so what happens basically is the top two rows of the itunes store are dedicated for that new and noteworthy so you have to be less mm -hmm. than 56 days old. And so when I, when Entrepreneur on Fire became 57 days old, I was no longer eligible and I was taken out of the new and noteworthy top rankings, which everybody is on their 57th day. And 
luckily for Entrepreneur on Fire, because of the momentum that I had, I immediately went to the next section down, which is called the What's Hut section. And these are all oh. podcasts that are much more popular and get many more downloads than any of the new and noteworthy podcasts because those new and noteworthy ones are brand new. But all of a sudden, you're playing in, um, instead of like playing in the little kiddie pool, which I was with the new and noteworthy, now I'm playing with the big boys in the What's Hut section. But luckily, I was able to gain such momentum and keep it going that I can play with the big boys. You know, now in the What's Hut section, you have Mr. Dave Ramsey, you have Wall Street Journal, you have Jim Cramer, you have Susie right. Orman. So you have the big boys that are now in the What's Hut section. And these guys have, you know, huge followings. And Entrepreneur on Fire not only is still always near the top of the What's Hut section, but I'm always a top 15 and sometimes a top 10 business podcast overall. Like right now, I just pulled it up. I'm currently sitting at number 13 right between Zig Ziglar and the Wall Street Journal. So it's really people are going to go to these top business podcasts. They're going to say, oh, well, I, I realize there's all these corporate podcasts out there, but let's check out this entrepreneur on fire. And then they subscribe and that keeps me there. So these are all listeners that I'm getting organically because of my high ranking and the social proof that comes with it. And plus the fact I'm always asking for ratings and reviews from people that reach out to me and say, John, I love your podcast. It's inspiring. My reply is, I'm so glad you found it inspiring. If you truly did find value, I would really appreciate a rating and review. And I give them the link and now I have over 262 five-star ratings in iTunes, which is a massive number compared with any other podcast you look at, no matter what they are. I mean, I could pull up, you know, like um, the Motley Fool podcast, you know, has 241 mm-hmm. five-star ratings, but they've been podcasting since 2007. You know, right. I, have more po- I have more ratings than them, um, you know, in just these last six months, but they don't ask for it because this isn't their focus. I ask for it. And so that's another thing to really get out there and, and make sure that podcasters know the value of the ratings and reviews. Because then when people come to my podcast and they see that over 256 people have taken the opportunity to rate and review my podcast, that's social proof. If there was like seven five star reviews, they'd be like, what's going on here? But Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, when I saw that, I was like, that's amazing. And you know, that's part of the new rules of the game now, the social marketing and social networks and platforms and the way, you know, marketing now is seeing it in different light. And, you know, what makes your show more powerful too, is that, like you said, the social proof is, I mean, look at who you're interviewing and and the scope, you know, um, the niche, you know, and your entrepreneurs and, 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 and basically in this age where we are right now with the economy, it's, I think it's going to be the age of entrepreneurs once again because we can't rely necessarily on the old school way of the way the corporations used to work. Now it's become more of a, an integrated fluid system worldwide to work with people from all over. The, industrial, revol- the industrial revolution is dead and it is 100% dead in the United States and it's dying many other places and you're so right i mean look at here i am in a studio that i created out of my spare you know basically loft in my condo and i'm speaking into a microphone in this little town in maine that literally reaches over 175,000 downloaders every single month in over 145 countries i mean i'm i'm closing on 800,000 downloads since I launched, which was just September of 2012. That's awesome. That's really exciting. Uh, You know, now that you're kind of, you know, going to those those heights, um, have you been approached uh, more recently uh, for opportunities to monetize your program? I definitely have been approached, and it's actually very interesting timing that uh, we're talking about this podcast right now because we're about to enter at the time that you and I are talking about this right now, Chad, not necessarily the time that this is going to air, um, but we're about to enter quarter two. We're about to hit April 1st, where I was just signed by three major sponsors, Audible.com, Squarespace, and LegalZoom, who have taken up all of my inventory for sponsorships for 2000, I mean, for the second quarter of 2013, which has made Entrepreneur on Fire on pace for a six-figure business just on sponsorships alone. So 
you know, for people out there that are really wondering if you can monetize podcasts, if you can monetize having an audience, well, there's absolutely proof in the pudding that yes, you can. That's awesome. I mean, that's really exciting. And that actually gives me like even more of a, that's exactly what I'm looking for. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, I have my own uh, ideas and businesses that wrap around the show, but I do this because I'm passionate about it because I see there's a lot of opportunity to work with businesses. People need uh, sort of people like you and I who are passionate about doing this and understand business and can talk about it and get the word out about their companies or, or that's our way of giving back is interviewing people for free to help build them. So it's kind of that paying forward and eventually as everything kind of comes around, goes around, you know, exactly. you don't have any expectations, but you just put it out there and you just never know. But I can tell you this, I already know because I've been doing it all my life. And that's the reason why I've been self-employed is I've followed the rules. You know, I do good business. I, you know, almost like the four agreements in the book of four agreements, I follow those rules the best I can. I'm not perfect, but if you stay in line as a good business person and you are a passion, you work and you give back to people you know, you will be, you should be able to sustain yourself. There should be no problem. And that's where I think people need to believe more in themselves in these times that like, if you're just willing to get up with a really good idea, literally overnight, your story in less than a year, you went from doing something totally, completely different to now having three corporate sponsors paying you a six figures. That's, it's like you're getting paid like maybe like what some NFL players probably get or no, the potential down the line is incredible. I mean, you know, Rush Limbaugh or, you know, I'm not trying to put you in the class of there, but different. No, you, you can. Know, That's people, okay. <laughs> you know, pe people that are like, you know, came from just like small backgrounds at first and then kind of rose up with their reputation and their, and their, their, uh, their platforms. It's amazing what talk radio or broadcasting has, um, has evolved into. And I mean, let me ask you this. Where do you see yourself maybe in like maybe a year from now? You know, a year is really the most I think anybody should look out in this day and age because we are in a period of such rapid transformation, such rapid change. The businesses that are going to be successful and the entrepreneurs who are really going to excel are going to be those who are just really flexible and are really willing to jump on that next wave that's coming in, ride it until it can jump off into the next one. There's no, you know, we're not planting our flag with Kodak, you know, for 30 years and getting a gold watch and a pension. I mean, we are looking for the trends in the, in the economy, jumping on those trends and providing as much value to as many people as possible. And so that's where I see myself in one year. I see myself still producing a daily podcast, Entrepreneur on Fire, interviewing incredibly inspiring entrepreneurs and sharing their journey, their life lessons, continuing to grow my audience and just continuing to add value to as many people as possible to truly fulfill my tagline, which is inspiring millions. That's my vision. That's my goal of Entrepreneur on Fire. And if I accomplish that, then I'll accomplish any monetary goal that I set. But first and foremost, you need to lead with providing value, providing motivation, and providing content. Absolutely. I mean, you've got to, in order to manifest that, you've got to move people. And you move people by the message that you put out and that energy that you put forth. And you've got a great energy. Um, I think it's really cool. You know, like you said, you're from Portland. I have a family lake house. I'm only, I only live in the summers about a half, half an hour from where you are. Yeah. I fly into Portland. It's beautiful up there. And my family has lived there for pretty much their entire life. I've been migrating from Florida to Maine um, by the season for the last 60 years. <laughs> so, um, so I take advantage of that. And I'm very fortunate to be able to do that. And maybe I'll be fortunate one day to actually get a chance to meet you in person. You can so, come see my studio. You can be like, this is really where you talk to Fire Nation. That's <laughs> awesome. I'll take you up on that. In fact, I've seen a picture somewhere along the way where you showed your studio. Yeah, somewhere. my About Me page. And it's really cool. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, I was like, he's got my style. I like that because I've, I've had you know environments like that in the past. Um, in Florida, they're not quite like that. I like that in Northern, but I lived in Atlanta before, and I had that loft feeling. So it's uh, it's pretty cool to live like that. Yeah, uh, I love it. But, um, you know, I always see Portland as a small Boston, you know, like a miniature Boston. It's a great place to visit and see without having all the traffic. Very miniature. <laughs>
Well, a little traffic, not much, but uh, anyway, well, you know, John, I really appreciate you having you on the show. I really love to have you come back again sometime and we talk about some other really great shoot stuff or the evolution of your show and maybe some interesting stories that you might have about some of your guests. Would you like to do something like that? Chad, I love the synergy that you and I have anytime the mic goes to green. So let's make it happen. <laughs> let's, awesome. let's, let's regroup. Let's see where we're at in a couple months because I know there's great things ahead for both of us. And I know that there's great things ahead to any listeners who are really just taking this advice to heart and, and really thinking that, you know what? I'm going to start. I'm going to start by providing incredible value. Great. Well, I really appreciate your time and your efforts in uh, to have, giving me the time to be able to interview and tell your story. And I really appreciate the audience for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed uh, the message that John put forth. You should really take the time to uh, check out John. John, how about if you give us one more uh, how to contact you? So my headquarters, entrepreneuronfire.com. If you can't spell entrepreneur like I still cannot spell entrepreneur, just go to e. <laughs> ofire.com. It'll get you to the same place. And I have a contact me form. You can subscribe to me on iTunes. I'd love to hear from you in any way, shape, and form. And just prepare to ignite. Yes, you are. Uh, I can also get uh, links to uh, John's sites uh, in the description of uh, this podcast, depending on uh, how you are uh, receiving it through syndication. But uh, try to look in the description, or you can visit uh, chaddecker.com, and uh, I'll be linked uh, to John, so uh, you can get to him that way as well. You're gonna well, have you're gonna have an amazing show notes page, Chad. <laughs> awesome! I appreciate it, Father John. If you like my show, please consider subscribing to it, which you can do by visiting my website, chaddecker.com. Or if you are an iTunes or Stitcher Smart radio listener, take it with you wherever you go on your mobile device. If you like my show and find it resourceful, please do your social network a favor and share, like, post, leave a comment, and subscribe to my show. I greatly appreciate your efforts and support, and you are part of what makes this show a success. Well, that's about it for this show. Good morning, good evening, wherever you may be across the nation and around the world. This is Chad Deckard signing off. Goodbye for now.